welcome to my presentation on Story Pirates Magic. My name is Cameron Katie, and we are going to walk through the wonderland of Story Pirates and see how it will help engage our learners. So our objective is that we are going to learn how to use Story Pirates to engage our learners. Our technology standard is to look at it through a creative communicator lens. We're going to see how students can clearly uh, express themselves and use a variety of different platforms, tools, styles, formats, and digital media that is appropriate in their specific goals for their grade level. My grade specifically is fourth grade, and we're going to look at some examples of how they've created and published these digital artifacts and presentations, and we're able to share those with other students in their class. So we're going to walk through a little bit of our direct instruction, which is it's going to kind of show you the how to to using Story Pirates to engage your learners. We're going to then kind of talk about a little bit of example exploration and seek more that we can to do with Story Pirates and seeing what a Story Pirates lesson looks like. And then obviously your you can write your questions in the comment box or whatever it may be. But if you have any questions, you can absolutely reach out to myself or Rita Boyd with those questions. So Story Pirates, what is Story Pirates? Why would you even use this resource? How do you even re use this resource? Will it change your engagement at all? And will it help boost student creativity where they're submitting something to you and you're seeing that creative outlet or that creative outlook on what they are doing? So follow me as we go to the next slide and talk about what is Story Pirates. Story Pirates is a family media company that is used to produce and create content that is all inspired by kids. And it's used by inspired kids for kids to use their imagination. It is a multi-award winning, top downloaded family podcast. It takes stories that are given by kids and then it brings them to life. It turns them into a sketch comedy. It turns them into a song. It turns them into them kind of vocally acting out what they are saying in the story. It is all based on ideas from kids that are all over the world. And then it includes, what's really cool is that it includes celebrities like Kristen Bell, John Oliver, Sarah Bareilles, Seth Meyers, many, many more come from this as well. They are across various cities. They come from various states, obviously. They are a nationwide podcast that is very, very well beloved. And it takes this creativity, this even like in this day and age, the loss of that creative and allows to add a little bit of a spark. That's what Story Pirates is. So why would you use it in your classroom? One of the main reasons that I use it in my classroom is to spark student engagement and excitement for learning, but including the use of technology. They use technology every day for some reason at some point, but we're kind of boosting that engagement and excitement for learning specifically. They use technology to do a million different things, games being the biggest thing, and our goal is to use the technology to spark engagement and excitement. And that's what Story Pirates does. That's a main reason why I use it. It also connects them to how they're receiving their information nowadays. Like I mentioned, kids have technology at their fingertips. So if we can allow them to use this as a creative outlet and a spark in creative genius, then that'll help us in the long run. Some other reasons that I, or that you could use Story Pirates is it's a fun outlook on learning. It's a new take on writing. It brings life to their work and it adds that 
different lens for learning. Sometimes we think too heavily about, oh, we got to teach to that specific standard and we have to make sure that it all engages and we're teaching to whatever that is. Well, this allows for us to take a different look and a different process to them understanding what you're teaching as the standard and then adding a bump of fun to it. It helps them to be able to kind of open their eyes a bit and go off the beaten path of what they can use to show their excitement, their engagement, their creativity, their imagination, the biggest thing, their imagination. Students can create their own and record their own if they are interested. They also, Story Pirates also add some differences to the learning environment and the learning experience. So most of the time we are thinking about how a teacher is going to teach the specific standard or the specific content. Where instead, in this case, it's the Story Pirates podcast that's leading the way and teachers are there to kind of facilitate the questions for it, the assignments for it, something that allows the students to use their listening skills, which is huge for ELA, and be able to take those listening skills and put them into work, into their creation method, or into how they're going to get their learning processed. So Story Pirates is important in those aspects. How would you use Story Pirates? There are a lot of different ways to use Story Pirates in your classroom. One, you can embed it straight into the lesson. Usually for ELA standards, that's kind of where you want to go for your ELA lessons and for embedding it in your lesson. You can also use it for students' comprehension skills by listening to the stories. If a student is listening and then they are answering questions based off of what they're listening, that also helps. They are to listen in their easy merit at some point, I'm sure, because in the practice, they are showing that if you can listen, there are probably going to be questions that they're going to have to answer just by their listening skills. It can be used to inspire students to create or to think creatively by writing their own stories. So now it's taking the adult out of the mix and then it, and it's inspiring students to use their own imagination and creative thinking. And that's something that is few and far between with a lot of these students nowadays. I would use it to engage students' ability to read aloud their story by recording their own. I haven't tried this yet, but I am going to try this this year in my class. I am going to see how they can create a story and then record their own story, similar to how story pirates record the stories of other students. Overall, peer enjoyment. It is such a fun podcast to listen to. It's funny. It is child-based, but it's funny. It's got great music. And it's a safe website that can be used to enhance learning. So instead of it being something like, oh, it's going to get these crazy ads, there aren't a lot of crazy ads. There are ads, but they are given by Story Pirates and that website itself. So it's a safe website. It's purely for laughter and happiness and kind of really embellishing their creative geniuses. When you go to storypirates.com, places to look on the main page for activities and more, there, if you go to the Story Pirates website, you'll scroll down to about halfway down the website, and it's going to have these four icons. I've used the activities. I have not used the submitted story yet. I have also not used the virtual program. So I have used mainly the activities and connect them to the specific podcast or music that is in that activity. And there are such fun questions and activities and things that are included that you can use as an entire lesson for your ELA, just depending on what you're teaching for that specific standard. Again, how would you use Story Pirates? So here's an example of how I would use Story Pirates. Currently, this lesson is for, it's talking about the perspective and making an inference based on the perspective that's coming from the story itself. Their job 
is to listen to the podcast, which I find most useful if, useful if you screen record it. That helps students to be able to listen to it again and again. And it also makes it easier when you're inserting it into or embedding it into your lesson. I use the activity page for the story, The Secret Life of Paintings, or The Secrets of the Paintings. And they listen to the podcast. They are making inferences. And I specifically said, like the yellow post-it note says, infer. Look for clues to tell you about what this person might be like. Are they silly, serious? What do they like to do? Where are they from? What kind of stories would they tell? All of these questions relate in to an inference and to the characters that are in the podcast itself. So it allows them to kind of spark a little bit of their listening skills because now they have questions that they're looking for when they are listening to the story itself. So the step one is this is the task that the students receive on a Google Slides. They could also do it on a Canva or any other device or, or tool that you use with your students. They listen to the podcast, The Secrets of the Paintings, not The Secret Life of the Paintings, The Secrets of the Paintings. Their step two is to observe the paintings on the preceding slides. So if you look down here to the bottom left, you've got observe the paintings below. So there are four different paintings that are here on the left. Then it says step three, choose one of the options presented to share your creation. So again, step three, this is all on Google Slides. I have created different things that help them to elaborate on their learning and to use their understanding of their listening skills from the podcast and place it into an assignment that allows them to use their imagination and their creative genius. That is something we wanna spark with them and that's something Story Pirates allows them to do. The first option was to type a script that tells a story from the perspective of the paintings that describes what the paintings are saying to one another based on the inference you have made about their behaviors. So what I tell my students is, you're going to basically, you are a director and your job is to type a script that's gonna tell the story from the perspective of the paintings. A script is a, basically if you're writing a drama, that's what you're gonna use. You need a cast of characters, you need, the speaking parts. You need the stage directions. So students take that if they want to choose that and they create their own script and story. The second option is to create a comic that shows how the characters interact with each other based on the inference you have made about how they treat each other. So now they're looking at how each other, each of the paintings would maybe treat each other in the real world. Be sure to include both characters' perspectives throughout their interaction in the comic. So now they're looking at how do they, how do these characters interact? What do we think is going to happen between these characters? So looking specifically at that portion. The third option is that they could choose a painting and write the story from the perspective of the character in the painting and explain how that character would interact with the people that live in today's world based on the inference you have made about the image they represent in the pin, in the painting itself. So I have a lot, I've had a lot of students choose Mona Lisa because she is one character that they are familiar with. So let's take a look at some examples that we have or that I have had my students turn in. This is an example of choice three. We have a story about Mona Lisa and she's today, she's in today's day and age. Boo, hee hee, ha ha, nice try, Jack, so Mona Lisa. Yes, it was me. Ho, 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 are you alive? Well, that's a long story, but long story short, I was alive the whole time. Wait, you are not in a painting and you are in the big chair and you are alive. How and why? I don't know how I am out. I don't know why I'm in this chair. I was alive for quite a while. Okay, so goodbye for now. So you can see that this has allowed them to open up their creative imaginations. And it's a fun way to look at how they're writing a story based on Mona Lisa and how they're interacting with, or how Mona Lisa is interacting with today's day and age. Another example of option three 
if the Mona Lisa was still a talking painting, now she probably will be a little rusty. Because I don't think she has spoken in a while, but I'm sure that she will still have her funny, ear-catching jokes. But her clothes and outfit will be a little old-looking and might not have enough money to buy new clothes. People will say that it is not Halloween yet and might even ask her what she is wearing. So as you can see, my student has included Halloween inferences. It's got a little bit of maybe the dress that Mona Lisa might wear, that she's poor, people might laugh at her, that she's funny. So this is another example of option three where they're choosing a specific painting and writing a story based on that painting. This is an example of option one. You can clearly see that this is a script. The student has done a really great job at doing and showing the speaking parts. Obviously, there are pieces that are missing, but again, these are fourth graders, and we have to keep our skew realistic as to what our expectations are. Another option, they've included a little bit of both. So this student chose three, but it's also pretty similar to a script. This is an example of option two. Mona Lisa, George Washington, Abe Lincoln. Again, they've included Abe Lincoln in this one because he is not included in the photos, but George Washington is. And you can see that they're clearly showing how they're interacting and treating each other. Now, the last example that I want to show you is not one of my students' examples, but it is a really, really, really cute and funny song about a dancing cupcake. And as you can see, there's the story on the right. This student has written the entire story. She's nine years old. She's from Pennsylvania. And she's talking about a dancing cupcake. And the incredible Sarah Bareilles is singing this song or this story has created a song and really brought it to life. So if you have a chance, you can click the link here and you'll get to kind of listen to the catchy tune that is the dancing cupcake. And on our last slide here, it's your turn to explore. You'll click on the image and that's going to take you to the adventure of the story pirates. There are, like I mentioned, activities included. There are a bunch of different stories that are added on this page here. You can dive into different music options that they have. They have included just about everything you would need that would help to give your students a break from the daunting normal keynote and worksheet and all of those types of resources that we use that have shown to work but are also kind of boring to be honest so this allows them to and us to open our eyes to a different outlet for them and allow them to spark their own imagination again and allow them to spark their creative genius and to show that and share that with teachers and other classmates and their parents if that's the case this is something that allows them to not be afraid to maybe public speak. This is for those who maybe are afraid to public speak. I think Story Pirates is a really, really great resource that would help increase your level of engagement, your level of enjoyment for your students, and quite honestly, for yourself as well as the educator. It gives everybody that happiness feeling within their bones and in their body. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation. Have a great, wonderful rest of your day.